Welcome to another message from Columbus First Assembly. Thanks for listening as we strive to learn and live the Word and ways of God. Our hope is that you're encouraged by today's message. Welcome to Stress Breakers this morning. In an article, Stress in the Times of COVID-19, the American Psychological Association reported this, quoting, many Americans are experiencing considerable stress related to the coronavirus and are also reporting higher levels of general stress than in recent years. American parents are, on average, feeling significantly higher levels of stress than adults without children. Parents report stressors related to education, basic needs, access to health care services, and missing out on major milestones. Also causing significant stress, according to this article, is the government's response to COVID-19, as well as stress related to the economy and work increases during the pandemic. And since this was, uh, the poll was taken and the article was written in May, they didn't say anything about the political situation, but I'm sure that would add to it. Now, let's be honest. We don't need the American Psychological Association to tell us we're under more stress. We don't need that. We feel it in our neck and in our shoulders, in our heads, in our backs. We feel it from the lack of good sleep and from our brains running over time. Adults are under greater stress, but so are kids under more stress. Teens are under more stress. Seniors are under more stress. Single adults are under more stress. Let's just face it, we're all feeling the impact of stress. And the question is, and many of you possibly have tried some things, what do you do? What do you do with the stress? That's what we're going to talk about today. Because through this message and through the illustration that I have set up here, which I hope you will find memorable enough to remember the points of my message, I'm going to give you some practical things to do with stress. There is a note sheet prepared for this message. Hopefully you picked it up. It's on the back tables in the lobby. But first of all, we're going to start out by defining stress. There's lots of definitions for stress, but I'm going to give you this one because it really dovetails with what Jesus said when we look at the scripture. Stress is an outside force applying pressure. It's an outside force applying pressure. There are things coming into your life that are applying pressure. Some stress can be avoided. But some stress cannot. You can't avoid it. Uh, you've got a major project at work. 
you're leading a team and a team member gets ill and the deadline is approaching, that team is going to be under stress and you as the team leader are going to be under even more stress. And so Jesus gives us some insight. There are other places in the scripture that gives us insight, but Jesus gives us some insight um, about stress. And John chapter 16 is where we're going to go this morning for our key verse. Um, Jesus reported what we're going to study, all of the 16th chapter of John. That was spoken hours before Jesus was crucified. Listen to verses 1 through 4, and then the verse that we're going to be looking at will come up on the screen. John chapter 16, 1 through 4 says, I have told you these things so that you won't abandon the faith. Jesus told them in advance what to do or how to respond because he knew they were going to be experiencing a lot of stress once he was gone. For you will be expelled from the synagogues, and the time is coming when those who kill you will think that they are doing a holy service for God. Now, that sounds to be stress-inducing as far as I'm concerned. There's people trying to kill you because they think they're doing a holy service for God. This is because they have never known the Father or me. Yes, I'm telling you these things now so that when they happen, you will remember my warnings. I didn't tell you earlier because I was going to be with you for a while longer. And then he gives them the bad news that he's leaving. Now, go to John 16, 33, coming up on the screen. Jesus ends this passage with these words. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and Sorrows. The New King James uh, says, here on earth you'll have many tribulations, but take heart because I have overcome the world. The Greek word translated trials and sorrows in the New Living Translation and tribulation in the New King James means an outside pressure that hems you in. I'm not going to put anybody in the corner, but it would be almost like they got pushed into a corner. Or maybe you got pushed into a locker. Ever had that experience in high school? Got pushed into a corner, got pushed into a locker, and outside pressure hemming you in. That's what stress is. That's what this word tribulation means. That's what this word that's been uh, translated trials and sorrow means. What Jesus is saying is this. In life, you're going to have many things that press in on you and cause you stress. In life, you are going to have many things that press in on you and cause you stress. Jesus is saying it's going to happen. You're going to have sorrows and trials and tribulation. These things are coming. But then Jesus said three very important things. And maybe if this is all you get from the message and it can get into your heart, it'll be enough. Jesus said, take heart. And look what he said. Take heart. I have overcome the world. If you could bring up the next slide, please. Take heart. I have overcome the world. Take heart. I know how to help you deal with these pressures. And take heart. You can have peace in me. Did you hear what he said? I have told you all these so that you may have peace in me. Jesus told us how to deal with stress and have peace in him. Here on earth, you'll have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. My lovely assistant, Vanna, would make her way his way to the platform today. Here, come, here comes my assistant. By the way, I want to thank Pastor Robert Morris. Some of this message was stimulated by uh, some thoughts that, that he had given. And um, this board represents your life. And now we're going to put your life under stress. Now remember, some stress is a normal part of life. You've got a mortgage to pay. You've got job responsibilities. You've got a teenager making poor choices. Add stress. Two blocks. (laughs) Two blocks for that one, okay. (laughs) You've got your kids in activities. More stress. Maybe you're dealing with an aging parent, a parent. Or the car is making a funny noise. Notice he's getting farther and farther away the more stress is being put on life. Now, now, here's the thing. Those are the normal things. Now let's add some stuff to it. How about a pandemic? Yeah, there we go, a pandemic. How about, how about um, 
economic downturn. And boom. Thank you. No, just leave it for now. See, stress will break you. And not everybody responds to the stress in the same way. There are some people, when life gets so stressful, they just shut down. There are other people that they just blow up. All of us... Stress will cause a reaction. There's this old, I think it's a physics saying, for every action, there's an equal but opposite reaction. For those of you that are scientists, did I say that right? Wow, okay. Well, he's nodding his head, so I'll believe that I said that right. But when you put stress on a life, there's going to be a reaction. How you react, how you deal with stress is very different for different people. But you get enough stress on a life, and something is going to happen. You're going to shut down. You're going to explode. Some people will go as far as having a nervous breakdown because of stress. But that's not what God wants, especially for his people. God has given us some ways of dealing with the stresses that come into our lives. Now, please understand, you're not going to be able to control all the stress. It's going to be there. So what can we do to deal better with stress? So let's... Go to the notes now and some teaching points. Number one today, here's the point. What can you remove temporarily or permanently from your life? We are in a time of incredible stress, stress we didn't ask for, stress that is being caused by our government, the way they're handling the pandemic, some people say, stress being caused by the illness itself. If you've been ill, you know the stress that comes from being ill. A friend of ours, I was just talking to Sherry, she came down with COVID, and it was bad. It was bad. I know what bad is like. Sherry, she has no understanding of what bad is like. Asymptomatic, test positive, has antibodies, didn't sniffle at all, not bitter on my part, who lived in a recliner for a month, or it seemed that way. No, no, no bitterness. The Bible tells me I'm not allowed to. I have forgiven the disease for treating her so nice. I actually, to be real honest, I'm glad that she was asymptomatic because this can really knock you down. But who asked for this? Nobody asked for it. It just came, and it put more stress on our life. So the thing is, we can't get rid of the pandemic. We can't get rid of the political season that we're in. We can't get rid of whatever the economy is going to do. What can you lift from your life? What can you remove temporarily or permanently from your life? And please understand this. It is not a failure It is not a failure to back away from some things. Sometimes we think, I should be able to handle that. God will never put more on me than I can handle, and if this happens, it must be me. In one sense, yes, because uh, uh, that's not necessarily a true statement. God won't put more on you than you can handle. In one sense, it's true, but we put stuff on ourselves that God never asked us to do, and that will cause us to break. So, Here's some suggestions. Maybe, listen up men or women, whichever one of you this applies to, maybe your house doesn't have to be perfectly clean. Or husbands, if you expect your wife to have it this way, maybe for for a period of time, just back off. The house doesn't have to be perfectly clean. You may need to say in some areas, good enough if that will help relieve some stress. Maybe you need to say that mac and cheese three times a week is okay to relieve some of the stress. Yeah, amen? I got an amen right down there. Okay. (laughs) But don't stress about it. Remember, it's temporary. It's to keep you, it's to keep this from happening. So if it's mac and cheese three times a week and a less than perfect house, Okay, someday you'll go back to those wonderful meals that have four or five courses and a a nice tossed salad, but maybe now it's mac and cheese. Um, You know what Jesus did? When stress got bad for Jesus, when the crowds got too much, and that was stress-producing, he pulled away, he backed away. 
So I need to ask you this. What might you need to back away from? Maybe you've been playing golf weekly with a group of guys or a group of gals, and maybe for a season you just need to back away. Maybe you've been playing basketball weekly with the same people for five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, and you can't imagine not playing basketball every Thursday at six, but maybe during this season, with all the extra stress, it's time to back away. You need to evaluate your life. Do remember this. Some things vitalize you and some things drain you. So evaluate. If, it's, if playing basketball vitalizes you, revitalizes you, then play basketball. But if it's just one of those things that's draining, it may be time to pull away. Use some wisdom as to what you're going to do. Ask your spouse. Pray about it. Where can you remove some weight from your life? Where can you remove some weight from your life? Now, okay, Everybody pay attention. Oh, you at home? I'm going to, you're not, you're not going to get away from me on this one because I'm going to do some meddling. Do you get bent out of shape because you have to wear a mask at work or when you go to a store? Are you getting worked up by all the stories in your social media news feed about whatever issue it is that you're clicking on? You know, what you're filling your mind with is going to cause you stress. Sherry and I had a discussion many, many months back about I was starting to, you know, I want to go to Walmart wearing a mask and I forget it in my car. And she said, wear the dumb mask. What's it matter? It's not that big of a deal. And really when I thought about it and I thought about how it was honoring the Lord to wear a mask because I'm honoring other people, you know, we're supposed to consider other people's needs as greater than our own. And there are some people that are very frightened when they get around people that don't have masks on. Well, the Bible tells me that I'm supposed to honor them and their needs. So Sherry and I had a discussion. So you know what? All of a sudden, even if I forget it in the car, and I did the other day, I was halfway into Lowe's, and I had to turn back around buying stuff for my illustration and uh, head back into Lowe's and head back to my truck and get my mask and unlock it and do those things. But... I didn't think much about it at all. I didn't get all bent out of shape. I didn't get all stressed because I began to approach that. But let's talk about social media feeds. Folks, if what's in your social media feed is causing you stress, is causing you anxiety, is causing you fear or worry, stop clicking on it. Remember, if you click on it, you're going to get more of it. That's how the algorithms work. I want to ask you a question. How many of you, and I want a show of hands, a show of hands, all right? Get ready. How many of you have read any news stories in your social media feed related to theme parks and roller coasters? Really? All right. A couple others. Why? I click on those. Most of you know that that's one of my joys in life is to ride uh, roller coasters. And so somebody has got an article or somebody has got a video, and I click on it. And my news feed has multiple of these things all the time. I don't complain about it. I don't get stressed out. But if you're clicking on this or you're clicking on that or you're clicking on this um, political thing or you're clicking on this conspiracy thing or you're clicking on that, true or not true, it doesn't matter. You click on it, you're going to get more of it. And the more that you get of it, you're going to want to click on it. And if it's causing you stress, if it's causing you anxiety, if it's causing you fear, stop clicking. How many of you have had ads or stories related to floor liners or car phone holders? Just was buying some floor liners for Sherry and a car phone holder for her. And guess what's appearing in my news feed? Ads. If you click it, you're going to get more of it. So if your news feed is causing you stress, one of the ways to remove, to lift some of this weight, one of the ways to do that is don't read, don't click through, just ignore. Things will change in your news feed. Click on something else. Okay. That was one. 
Okay, that part of the meddling's over with. I don't know if I'll meddle anymore later, but that one's over. So, okay, phew, we're done with that. Number two, what can you not add temporarily or permanently to your life? What can you do to not put more weight on yourself? That broke with eight. What if there was another one that needed to be put on? Something you couldn't control. You have a spouse that gets ill. And that weight is coming on. Is there some other stuff that you cannot add to your life to give yourself a little bit of margin? What can you not add to your life temporarily or permanently? There's a new project you want to do around the house. It's been bothering you. You've wanted to do this new project, whatever it is, whether it's uh, changing out some flooring or painting uh, a room or painting the whole outside of your house, and it's been bothering you, but maybe this is the time not to add something else. Back when we started the church in Marysville, and this has been, gosh, it's almost 30 years ago now, and uh, we moved into our new house, we left the town of Colby, and in Colby, with the job that I had, um, I was able to have a really nice lawn, a really nice lawn. Rob, I know that you comment about my nice lawn. I had a really nice lawn. I had the time to do it. So we moved to Marysville. Um, Rob, when we bought a house in Marysville. We bought it in the summer. The lawn was somewhat green. <laughs> but I didn't realize, Rob, that they had planted zoysia grass. Anybody know zoysia? Zoysia does everything that zoysia grass is supposed to do. But in this area of the world back in Kansas, your grass is green from about May 30th to August 15th. Hey, you might get September. As soon as the weather turns cold, it turns brown. Oh, I hated it. I hated the zoysia grass. And I kept thinking, how do I change this? And how do I do that? So I'm coming up with all of these ways. And I hired somebody to kill it all out and to plant some more. And I did a few things, but I was stressing about not having a perfect lawn. So one day, I just decided that, you know, I've got three little kids, and I've got a church that I'm planting. You know what? It might not be perfect, but let's get it green and weed-free. That lasted for a season, then I just settled for green. <laughs> and then, actually, as long as it wasn't dying. But I had to back away because I like a nice lawn. And now that I have a little bit more time, I don't have three kids around the house. I wasn't planting a church. I have a nice lawn. And I actually hire somebody to do the fertilization and things. And boy, that is great. But I had to not add some more things because by adding that was adding more stress. Maybe this is meddling. I don't know. I'll let you decide. Saying yes to everything your kids want to do. Maybe adding a considerable amount of stress. Some families, their kids are involved in 13 things. And in a time like now with all the additional stress that we have no control over, all of the weight that has been put on, it may be that you're not going to add anything else. Oh, but can I do? No, not now. Possibly that's a place where you could remove some things. I don't know. It's between you and your spouse, you and God. Maybe not taking on extra responsibilities for your HOA or being president of a service club. Don't put more weights on yourself. Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 6, verse 34. This is coming up on the screen. Jesus said, so don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. You have the ability today to handle the stresses of today, but some of us take yesterday's stress and put it on. They take tomorrow's stress and put it on. And we have more stress than we should. We've got to break out of that habit of worrying about yesterday, worrying about tomorrow, bringing that stress in. In fact, I've retranslated the verse. This is the past direct translation. It actually does not translate the Greek well at all. It just happens to make my point really well. My translation, don't be stressed out about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own stresses. Today's stress, <laughs> today's stress is enough for today. So, uh, Pastor Evan, if you would like to begin to reset this up, if you need somebody, uh, we're going we're gonna to move on to number three this morning. Number three, how can you strengthen your inner man? How can you strengthen your inner man? The inner man, Jesus said, is our, um, is our soul and our spirit. That's the inner man. And really, what we had here set up 
is a representation of our inner man and our inner life. And we're going to reset this up again. And it, I'm going to show you something that I think is really fascinating and interesting. There you go. And we'll just get the broken inner man and throw him down there. Just throw him down there. Bring me another one. So let's, let's get ourselves put back together. Okay, our inner man. I'm going to give you, there's more things, but I'm going to give you three things that you can do to strengthen your inner man. The first is prayer and the Bible, the Word of God. The Bible and prayer. Getting into God's Word and praying strengthens your inner man. The second thing is this. Bring it up. Gathered worship and private worship. Gathered worship and private worship. There is something that takes place to strengthen your inner man when you worship, when you gather together as we are here to worship. Private worship, whether it's at home, streaming. For some of you, it means uh, the worship that you have when you drive or uh, at home. I know some of you can't be here for gathered worship, but when you can, please understand, there is something special that takes place in gathered worship that will not take place in other ways because God has built it this way. So you have the Bible and prayer, you have gathered worship and private worship. And then the last one is groups and relationships. Groups and relationships. People can help strengthen your inner man. Uh, my assistant, would you put a bit of weight on there, please? We have now got a life whose inner man is strengthened. More, please. Come on. I'd like him to do four at a time, but I don't think he can do it because I couldn't do it. <laughs> okay, you're going to do three? You're going to do three? You're going to be, come on, come on. That's about, I don't know, 30, 40 pounds. Go ahead. Put it on there. Look at that. Ooh. Look, these are not very thick. I mean, it's not like I put two by fours under there. Tell you the truth, they're three quarters by three quarters. But because of their strategic placement and because they're placed vertically, there is, I don't think there's quite 100 pounds on there. But I can honestly tell you it will support more than 200 pounds because I tried to walk on it. And I did walk on it just fine, but the, the <laughs> these things were too shaky. I was going to do some tightrope walking today. And, and, and it scared Evan so much that I decided not to because he was helping me with it. But this is what you can do to help you with the stresses of life. How do you strengthen your inner man? Through getting in God's word daily, through praying daily, through coming to worship, gathered worship, private worship, getting in a group. Pastor Evan talked about the seven groups we're starting. It doesn't have to be one of our groups, but do you have a group of people that you get together with regularly? Do you have relationships? Look at what the book of Ecclesiastes says about the value of, of uh, relationships. Two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls... The other can reach out and help, but someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm. But how can one be warm alone? 
A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. We need relationships. Listen, to strengthen your inner man, the word of God, prayer, gathered in private worship, relationships and groups, all very important to strengthening the inner man. Now, this is an illustration. It's not perfect because there does come a point where even the things that you do to strengthen your inner man, if you can't control those things that you can control, will be a problem. But you want to know what some people do? And I haven't tried this part of the illustration yet, so we're going to see if it works. But do you want to know where they back off first when stress gets high? Woo! See, I haven't tried that part of the illustration. <laughs> I took just one of those posts out, the Word of God in prayer. Isn't that what happens to many of us when pressure and stress comes on us? We are less in the Word, we're less praying, we're less in groups, we're less in worship. And we'll bust again. We'll break. That worked better than I thought. Sorry that I scared you down the middle. I was just trying to knock it down there, but boy, I... <laughs> this is a picture. I don't know. Some, maybe somebody at home needs to hear this. This is a picture. This is a picture of what's happened to your life. Because stress got high, and you kicked out the things that were most important. Point four, coming up on the screen. Strengthen your inner man before you need it. Do you notice that I had those things in place before we put all the weight on it? Strengthen your inner man before you need it. Then number five, if you haven't or you're under a lot of stress, maintain and increase your strength when you are under stress and pressure. I didn't want to deal with this. I'm going to let you imagine it. But when this thing was bowed, okay, if we would have got some of these the right height and put it under it and then slowly but surely slid just small amounts under it, we would slowly but surely lift this up. Does that make sense what I'm saying? You could just add to it just a little bit at a time. You may be under a lot of stress, and you've let some of these things go by the wayside, and you're about ready to collapse. Get underneath yourself. Strengthen your inner man now. It's not going to be perfect right away, but little by little, especially if you can take some things off, not add some things to it, and you can get under there, building it back up all of a sudden, you will be able to handle stress. It's a stress breaker. This was stress breaking our lives, but we can break stress. We're going to close with a prayer. And I actually have the prayer on the screen for you just so that you can see it. I didn't put it in the notes. There wasn't enough room. But this is what I want us to pray today. Holy Spirit... What do you want me to remove? Ask him. He wants to help you. Holy Spirit, where do I need to strengthen my inner man? Where do you need to strengthen? Is it is in, re in relationships and groups? Is it in gathered worship, private worship, the word of God in prayer? Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Each of our lives is different. We don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to tell you that you need more of this or more of that. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. And then three, Holy Spirit, where do I need to relax and just depend upon you? Remember, we can't control all this stress. Some places we just need to relax. We just need to let go of some things. Where do I need to relax and depend on you? It's going to be our prayer today. Would you bow your heads? No, nope, you can't see this if you... No, nope. go ahead and bow your heads, and I will say the prayer. I'll have you repeat it after me. Would you repeat after me? Holy Spirit, what do you want me to remove? Holy Spirit, where do I need to strengthen my inner man? Holy Spirit, where do I need to relax and just depend on you? Lord, you have heard our prayer. 
Jesus, you have told us that we will have tribulation and trial. We will have sorrows. But Lord, you have told us this and you've shown us what we need so that we may have peace in you. You have overcome the world, which means you can help us to see what we need to do. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, speak to each of us now, both here in the building and at home. We're going to take just a few moments of silence now. Let's let the Holy Spirit speak. Lord, we know and believe that you are a speaking God. And if we haven't heard from you in this moment, you will bring to our attention the answers to our prayers to show us what needs to be removed, where we need to strengthen, where we need to relax. Because you love us and you want us to have peace in you and not to be destroyed and broken by stress. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you speak. We love you. We pray in your name. Amen. Team, if you'd make your way back to the platform. Hey, for those of you at home, God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. I hope this illustration will help you to understand some of the stress that you're dealing with in your own life right now. God loves you. And if there's something that we can do to assist you, to pray with you. Would you please communicate with us online? Pastor Evan will be coming just briefly, and he will just tell you how to communicate with us here at the church. We love you, and we thank you. And I want to say thank you also for those of you at home who continue to support this church, even though you can't be with us in the facility. I walked into Christie's office uh, this week, and once again, I saw a, 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 a stack of mail, several pieces of mail that had come in that were you, those of you at home who had sent your tithe, who had sent your missions in. Thank you for that. I never want to take for granted how wonderful both those of us that are gathered and those who are at home are in the support of this church. Thank you so much for all that you do. God bless you all. Those of you who are home, God bless you. We are going to be dismissing you at this point. But this Sunday, we're receiving communion here in the building. And uh, I didn't make arrangements and, and cue you in advance to have things ready. So we're going we're gonna to dismiss our home audience. And we're here going to go and have some time where we can go to the Lord's table in prayer. God bless you, home audience, and thank you for being there. You're our e-family, and we love you. Pastor Evan will give some additional information and direction. For those of you that are here today. You've been listening to a message from Columbus First Assembly. We hope that you've been encouraged in your spiritual journey. If you're not part of a local church and would like to attend one of our regular services, our church is located at the corner of 10th and Iowa Street in Columbus, Indiana. Our Sunday morning worship services start at 10 a.m. and our Wednesday evening studies begin at 7 p.m. And while you're online, check out our website at columbusfirstassembly.org for details and information about our church. You will also find other messages and series that you can listen to or download. Thanks for spending some time with us and for taking advantage of this resource from Columbus First Assembly, where we strive to learn and live the word and ways of God.